This is a quick presentation to go over a geometric mnemonic that can be used for remembering the implementation shortfall model in the level 3 curriculum of the CFA exam. Um, I've made a couple of these videos, but I'm trying to get this one under um, the 10 minute YouTube requirement, so I'm going to go a little bit quickly. Um, the basic idea of the implement short, implementation shortfall um, approach is that it uh, is able to capture a number of the different types of trading costs that go into portfolio decisions. There are the explicit costs, which are the most obvious ones that are basically um, the commissions that are billed to you by your broker when you make a trade. Um, but these, the CFA curriculum points out, is um, the, these are actually um, just the tip of the iceberg, that in fact there are a large number of other costs that um, go into uh, trading decisions and among these are the delay costs. This are basically the, the, the price the effects of the price changes between when a portfolio manager decides that they want to buy or sell a stock and the time when a trader uh, actually gets an executable order or a realistic executable order. The purpose of keeping track of delay costs is actually um, institutional. If you have different sections of your organization um, making the decision and actually executing the decision, then um, at bonus time it becomes important to uh, divide up the, the blame for different kinds of costs. So delay costs are basically costs that are attributed to the portfolio manager. Um, once the trader gets an executed order, they um, they have to be concerned about the market impact cost, which is basically about um, about the movement in the price um, as the stock is being traded in the way that the portfolio manager is asking. Now, some of those movements may be um, because of the size of the of the particular order, particularly if you're an institutional. Uh, trader, um, but it may actually um, come from other events too. And finally, there are opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are basically mistrade um, costs. For example, if you do some analysis and that a stock is a good buy and the, and the stock explodes um, and makes a lot of money, the fact that you didn't enter uh, as full a position as you uh, had intended is an opportunity cost. Um, also, it can mess up your portfolio if you're um, trying to keep things appropriate ba appropriately balanced or hedged. So um, basically, this is a geometric model that can help you keep track of the prices. Um, basically, I have an axis here. The x-axis tells you the number of shares that you've bought. You could, in theory, have proportion of shares, but I like to keep track of the actual number of shares. And then there are four prices to take care of. The first is when the portfolio manager actually um, decides to buy, let's say the portfolio manager is buying a stock, um, the time when a trader gets an actionable decision or a realistic buy decision, uh, typically the CFA exam will actually sit there and tell you that the portfolio manager put in an unrealistic limit order um, and this caused delay and um, the price went against the um, went against the portfolio manager while they were having this unrealistic order. And so the, there's a realistic decision at some point in the sort of storyline that the CFA will give you. Um, the, then um, the trader actually makes the trade, and for whatever number of shares that get sold, there is an average price, and so you got to keep track of the average execution price. And then finally, there's a price where the the uh, attempt to buy more or potentially to sell more shares um, is canceled. This may typically be a, another limit order that once the price exceeds that. Um, that number, then the trading can't take place. And so basically, this chart here tells you how you can try to um, allocate the different costs geometrically. The, where we're going here is that the uh, areas of these rectangles basically represent the different costs. So if you wanted to buy IBM, 100,000 shares of IBM, you'd plot out 100,000 shares on the x-axis and then you decide to buy it at $50, so that's sort of your base price. Um, let's say that there's some kind of delay or an unrealistic decision and then um, by the time a realistic decision is made, IBM has risen to $51. That's basically a $1 change, um, but we have to finish the story before we're able to 
to compute all the costs. Then at $51, a trader gets a gets an order to execute, and the idea there is that it's a limit order to sell, or oh, sorry, not to sell, but to buy 100,000 shares um, at $55 or less. So if the price goes above $55, we're not going to um, we're not going to buy anymore. And so the trader does his magic. Um, so the early shares that he buys are maybe close to 51. As time goes on, he buys more expensive shares, and then finally. Um, after selling 60,000 shares, the, um, the, the 60,000 and first share is actually $55 or above, and so only 60,000 shares are sold. And let's say the price never comes back down, it stays above 55. At the end of the day, only 60,000 shares are sold. The order is canceled because the portfolio manager doesn't want to pay more than 55, so there are 40,000 shares that aren't sold. Now you can start to construct each of these rectangles, and the key here is that the areas of the different um, rectangles here indicate the different um, components of the of the uh, uh, trading costs. So, for example, sixty thousand shares were um, were sold, but the price rose one dollar while the portfolio manager was delaying or. Um, didn't have a realistic order, so the delay cost is sixty thousand times the one dollar difference, um, and that uh, ends up being sixty thousand dollars that's attributable to the portfolio manager. Um, the the trader was able to get fifty four dollars as the average cost for sixty thousand shares. Um, so for for the realized cost, you basically take the difference between 54, the average price, and 51, which was the price the trader was um, actually able to start acting on, um, and 3 times 60,000 is 180,000. Uh, dollars of realized cost, and then there are 40,000 shares that uh, that weren't weren't sold at all. Um, the difference between the the cancellation price at $55 and the initial price at 50 is $5, and there are 40,000 shares. So the area of that uh, rectangle, 40,000 times 5 or $200,000, and that's the opportunity cost. Then basically what you want to do is you want to add up all the costs. I didn't tell you what the explicit costs were, but your broker will certainly tell you. I'm assuming that maybe 10, 000, uh, sorry, 10 cents per share is what um, what this broker might be might be charging. 60,000 shares were sold times 10 cents per share. That ends up being $6,000 in explicit costs. And then uh, we worked out the delay cost from the red rectangle at 60,000, the realized cost from the sort of beige rectangle at 180,000, the opportunity cost from the blue rectangle at 200,000, add them all up and you get $446,000 is the total. Um, is the total transaction cost that can be attributed um, using the implementation shortfall model. Um, you can divide that by the 100,000 shares that were initially uh, requested to do that on a per share basis of uh, different costs. And if you want to use a percentage, I don't have this on the table, but what you can use is you want to use the $50 um, price, which is the price that the portfolio manager originally wanted, as your base. So you can either use $50 on a per share basis, or you can take $50 times 100,000 shares and um, compare that with the total set of transaction costs. Um, if you're shorting, it's basically the same situation, except the price will be falling instead of rising while you're um, making these uh, making these changes in these costs. So it's th it's the same idea. This works both for buying and um, selling or shorting securities. So that's basically the um, visual aid I have for the implementation shortfall. It helped me a lot when I was on um, studying for the exam. I know that uh, the exam is coming up very quickly and uh, lots of people are panicking, so hopefully this will help um, avoid the panic that many people uh, are facing, or at least reduce it. So good luck, guys. Hope this helps.